Would you please welcome with me, from the class of 1941, Mr. Justin M. McCarthy. I've tried to think of something appropriate that would be popular with the court, and I decided if I said brigade dismissed, it would be the most wonderful thing I could say. <laughs> but I won't say it. Somebody <laughs> might take exception. <laughs> this is indeed a m remarkable honor. I uh, am so pleased and proud to see some of the former recipients who truly deserve this. I'm not sure I fit into that category, but I'm not going to rescind the opportunity. I have uh, had a great life. My wife of 61 years would be here if she could, but her pulmonary problem won't allow her to walk more than a few hundred feet without running out of air. So she is home rooting for me. She is a, a wonderful, wonderful lady. I call her Miss Wonderful. She still is. 61 years later. Suffice to say that I am honored to have two of my siblings here, my brother Charles, class of 41, and my sister, Sister Mary Paula McCarthy of the Visitation Order. She's only been there about 108 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I have two of my four children here, my son Daniel, number one son, Number two son, John, who is named for my brother, who died in France in 1944. We were four brothers attending the academy, class of 36, 38, 41, and 44. Together, all of us in the McCarthy clan, as we call it, number only 17, and according to the Battises, that's a good start. <laughs> We are so honored to be here to receive this remarkable award, especially since at one point, the year I was born, my parents took me home to Portland Avenue just off the, Saint Tom the old St. Thomas campus. Ed Hames lived next door, and he and my older brother were classmates all through St. Mark's and St. Thomas. We knew Ed well. As a matter of fact, I like to tell the story about my brother going to kindergarten at St. Mark's as a five-year-old. The nun was calling the names of the students and asking them to stand so that she could recognize them. She called Frederick McCarthy. Frederick McCarthy? Nobody responded. Ed spoke up and he said, if you want that guy to answer, you better call him Bud. <laughs> And Bud was known all through the years. So you see, we were related, in a sense, to Ed Hames from early on. I've wondered what I could ever say to you people to impress you with the wonderful secondary school in which you are enrolled. I have heard some wonderful things from many alumni this weekend. We heard a wonderful mass this morning Father Mike Arms of the class of 60 gave a remarkable tribute to all of you and all of those who came before you. It was just great. And I thank you, Father. Thank you very much. I have to live with myself and so I want to be fit for myself to know. I want to stand in the setting sun and be not embarrassed for anything I've done. I want you to think about that. It's not a bad code for lifetime prophecy. There, uh, as an academy student, I had a fellow named Bob Felker as my English teacher. And it was he who introduced me to poetry and got me involved. He had a career all staked out for me as a writer which I never became, and, uh, but I have maintained a love for poetry because of his remarkable introduction. Sometime when you're feeling important, sometime when your ego's in bloom, sometime when you're dead certain 
you're the best qualified in the room. Sometime when you think that you're leaving would create an impossible hole, try this simple exercise and see how it humbles your soul. Take a pail and fill it with water. Put your hand in it up to the wrist. Pull it out. The hole remaining is the extent to which you'll be missed. You can stir the water as you enter. You can splash it galore, but leave it for just one minute. It's much the same as before. Now, the moral of this little story is to be the best that you can, but never lose sight of the fact there is no indispensable man. Not a bad idea. Keep it in mind. I try to say that every morning in front of the mirror, but sometimes I fog the mirror and I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> My brother in discussing coming said, uh, anything I can do for you? And I said, sure, come. He said, no, I had in mind maybe I could shrink your head. <laughs> well, I am so pleased and proud to stand before this Corps of Cadets. You call it a Corps Brigade. Which is it? Or am I barking up the wrong? Corps. Corps. Very good. Corps of Cadets. That's what we knew it as in 1941. Now, I'm well aware that you people can't live up to our standard of former day. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But we'll do our best not to smile as you parade this after, later this morning. I want to thank the committee, those who had a hand in my nomination. They usually are right on target, but they made a mistake this year, and I think they ran out of candidates, so here I am. Isn't it strange that princes and kings and clowns who caper in sawdust rings and those who, um, well, I've got it here, and kings, and isn't it strange that princes and kings and cowboys who caper in sawdust rings and common folks like you and me are builders for eternity. Each is given a bag of rules, a shapeless mass, and a, bag, and a bag of tools, and each must make, before life has flown, a stumbling block or a stepping stone. I invite you to hack out that stepping stone. Thank you very much for your recognition. <laughs>